Radio Play Comic is meant to adapt the stories, mostly, of great unadapted old and forgotten comics from the past. I use voice acting and narration to abridge the work as much as possible without lessening its impact, and to bring these stories to life the best way I can. Please enjoy. Hi, I'm Nick, and welcome to the Fusion Space for today's episode of Radio Play Comic, Green Lantern, Silver Surfer, Unholy Alliances. Back in 1995, many DC and Marvel crossovers were published leading up to the big event DC vs. Marvel, which I've already adapted, along with a separate episode for the Amalgam comics. This crossover is the one that leads the most directly into the event, placing this story firmly in continuity. Kyle Rayner is the last Green Lantern in the DC Universe after Hal Jordan destroyed the Green Lantern Corps and took all the power for himself, becoming the villain Parallax. Though he failed to restructure time during Zero Hour, he remains a threat at large, committed to making the cyborg Superman pay for the crime of destroying Coast City, which set Hal on his malevolent path. The Silver Server was once Norin Rad, who pledged his life in service to the world devourer Galactus to spare his home of Zen La and his love Shalabal. And for a long time, he sought out worlds full of life for Galactus to consume. Eventually, he rebelled against his master, and now strives to use the power cosmic to atone for his misdeeds as one of the Marvel Universe's most powerful heroes. When Parallax chases the cyborg into an unknown universe, he finds instead the Silver Surfer, and the two find they have some things in common, and become allies when Hal Jordan shows the Surfer he can use his power cosmic to restore a destroyed planet to full life. Meanwhile, back on Earth in the DC Universe, Green Lantern Kyle Rayner makes the acquaintance of Thanos and becomes convinced to help him as well and lend him his power. This does not go well, as you might imagine, and soon the two pairs of allies meet and find themselves at cross purposes, and the Surfer and the Lantern are pit against one another in combat. Can they overcome their misconceptions in time to fight the real threat? With this kind of power being thrown around, all of existence might well hang on the outcome of their battle. It's not a long story, but it is an exciting one. So without further ado, let's begin. Such destruction, vast and obscene, an entire planet ripped asunder like a rotten fruit. How many times have I been witness to horrors of this scope? all too often when I serve my world-devouring master. Yet I do not sense his hand at work here. This devastation has been wrought by another. A man in a red cape observes the devastation around him in space. What manner of creature could be responsible for this cruel havoc? The cape is not his, nor is the legacy he pretends to embody, for it is the cyborg Superman, a terrible and powerful villain from Earth. Disturbing. A being with power enough to butcher a world should be known to me, yet he is wholly unfamiliar. Human he might have been once, but there is more machine than man about him now. <sighs> Stand where you are! I would know your identity! I would know if you are to blame for this carnage! Who are you? The Silver Surfer blasts the ground where he stands. Poom! <laughs> I am called Silver Surfer. Consider me a protector of the universe, if you wish, and consider that a warning. He truly does not know me, and obviously does not fear me. So, this universe as well is populated by self-proclaimed heroes. Call me Cyborg. The planet you're so concerned about tore itself apart. What can I say? Wasn't up to the strain I placed upon it. I've no idea how I came to be here, but my plans are the same. I'll create War World again, if not on this world, then on another, and nothing can stop me. The cyborg transforms his arm into a cannon and shoots a stream of fire at the surfer. <laughs> Sufficient might to stagger me, an opponent to be reckoned with then. You have obliterated what I once preserved. These were a peaceful people. I saved their planet from the hunger of all-powerful Galactus when I was his herald. One of the few worlds I spared from the world devourer is now dead. Savage irony. With little exception, my service to Galactus was a litany of sin. 
the guilt of those callous misdeeds ever drives me to seek redemption. Harold, to an all-powerful being? Worth remembering. It's not my way to force conflict, yet neither will I turn from it. The two travelers of the starways collide in a burst of power. <laughs> Must it always be so? Because I wield the power cosmic, is my existence to be measured in battle and tragedy? So it would seem. If that is my burden to bear, so be it. Once I was flesh and blood. Once I embraced the pleasures and pains of mortal life but they are denied to me forevermore. On Earth, freelance artist Kyle Rayner sits at his drawing board. Okay, Kyle Rayner, you do a new logo for Radu's place downstairs and you knocked a few bucks off your rent for the month. Good deal. Especially since I'm not sure how much longer my Titan salary is going to be coming in. I might have to start cutting back on... Suddenly his window explodes inward and Kyle throws up an energy shield. <laughs> hey! What's an explosion? Powerful enough to shatter windows? Sorry, Radu. Didn't finish the logo because I had to go be Green Lantern and make sure Greenwich Village didn't blow up. Yeah, that's just what I'll tell him. Rain can do anything. Only limits are my imagination and willpower. I'm wearing the most powerful weapon in the universe on my finger. Or so I've been told. And it only works for me. Cool, huh? Its power is finite, though, like a car running on a tank of gas. Use it all up, and that's it. So I need to recharge it on my battery every so often. He charges his ring. <laughs> At least I think so. When the last Guardian gave me the ring, he didn't leave instructions. Kyle flies out the window as Green Lantern. <sighs> Still, seems like I've done alright so far. Taking on a tradition like this, following in Hal Jordan's footsteps. You know, kind of daunting. But I'm doing everything I can to be worthy of it. My inexperience hasn't gotten me killed yet, though that might be about to change. A large alien wielding an axe stands in the rubble of a destroyed park. Ah, finally you arrive, Great Lantern. Me? You know me? Guy looks serious, ugly and serious, and definitely not from around here. If what he did to Washington Square Park is any indication, I don't want to be on the receiving end of whatever he's got. I was told of you. Told you were the only obstacle in the way of my conquest of this universe. His axe glows with power. Hmm? Never even seen this guy before. And I can't say I'm thrilled he knows who I am. Don't know how much of a disadvantage that puts me at. Conquer the universe? Uh-huh. I can see that happening. Bad enough you tore up the park. Kyle leaps to attack the alien, but he swings his axe up high and a column of earth rises with it, striking the lantern in midair. Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> I am Terax! None stand before me! Meanwhile, in space in the Marvel Universe, the Silver Surfer dodges Cyborg's eye beams. <sighs> this universe, those were the Cyborg's words, as if he originated in another. Is such possible? How long? How long do you think you can avoid me? It did seem the existence of Galactus was a revelation to him. Perhaps he truly is a visitor to this reality. Sooner or later, I'll catch up with you. Cyborg hurls a rock at his silver opponent. <sighs> However intriguing, the cyborg's origins are a secondary concern, of course. I must first devote myself to halting his rampage. He blows it to pieces. <laughs> you have considerable power at your disposal, but I command the power cosmic. Surfer catches Cyborg in an energy wave. This is the extent of your... <laughs> when suddenly he is struck with a blast of green power. The cyborg? Attacked? By another? Who? Parallax appears. Cyborg, I've found you. Terax rises on a mountain of earth. <laughs> I didn't journey here to be defeated by some boy. The earth itself rises at my bidding. Well, he's not only the size of a bulldozer, he can do about the same thing. Kyle moves the earth with a green bulldozer. And he's got an axe to grind. Terax chops it apart as GL leaps out of it. 
I've conquered entire worlds. That right. I'm too impressed for words. Really. He fires green energy at Terak, who blocked with his axe. <laughs> now I made him mad. Yeah, just what I wanted to do. He swings at a Kyle, who ducks. <sighs> Come on, you gotta do better than that if you're serious about decapitating. <clears throat> Terax throws a rock that hits the back of the lantern's head. No one will be left to oppose me once you are dispatched. Uh, this guy called Superman, maybe? Ever hear of him? No. Just then, Terax is blasted with orange energy. <clears throat> <clears throat> Superman, please tell me that was Superman. Thanos arrives on a cosmic throne. Thank the stars. I've arrived in time. Great. Another one. Back in space. Hal Jordan, Green Lantern. Somehow you followed me? There's very little I can't do, though now I've taken the name Parallax. Another unfamiliar player. Another powerful one. Time to answer for Coast City, cyborg. For millions of lives. Time to pay. Hal Jordan hits the cyborg with a battering ram. <laughs> Considering the destruction the cyborg has caused here, it seems likely this one calling himself Parallax is in the right. Silver Surfer gets between them. Nothing happens until I find out who you are and what's going on here. But I need to be certain. This doesn't concern you. It does when a life any life is threatened. You don't know what is. As they talk, the cyborg slips away. Gone! I've lost him again because of you. He can be tracked easily enough if need be. First, I would have my questions answered. You are Hal Jordan, called Parallax? I have traveled widely in this universe. Why have I never heard of you? Because I'm not from this universe. I come from what you would consider another reality. And the other creature, the cyborg, is from your reality as well? I've witnessed countless wonders in my journeys. His claim is certainly possible. He eradicated the city that was my home, slaughtered its people. I was pursuing him when he was snatched out of our universe. The power I possess allowed me to follow. You sought out this villain in order that justice might be served? You are a hero, then? Hmm... Once. Once I was Green Lantern. I wielded a ring of power and served the guardians of my universe. I always did what was right. But that's the past. All of it ended when the cyborg destroyed Coast City. I saw things differently. I became this and did some questionable things. But for good reasons. All I've ever wanted was for everything to be right again. You can understand that, can't you? This man has lost much. His home, his loved ones, and been transformed. Do I not share a certain kinship with him? And on Earth. You! You sent me here in the first place! You put me up to this! Told me there was a new universe ripe for the conquering! Okay, so who's the guy in the recliner? Even uglier than Terax. Terax leaps at Thanos. I can't believe I trusted you again! Frankly, I was surprised as well. Thanos catches his axe between his hands. <laughs> he fries the villain. <laughs> and a hell of a lot more powerful. Pitiable, really. A madman with delusions of universal conquest. But easily returned whence he came. Thanos presses a button on his throne. Terax vanishes in a burst of light. I'm relieved I was able to get here before he caused any real harm. Especially to you. Uh-huh. And all that stuff he was saying about you setting him up? The rantings of a lunatic, I assure you. I think that should be fairly obvious from his behavior. Please, allow me to introduce myself. I am Thanos. I understand what that is, to do the right thing. I am as you see me now because I did what I believed to be the right thing. I became herald to Galactus 
allowed myself to be suffused with the power cosmic in order to save my planet Zen La from his hunger. I gave up my world, the woman I loved, even my humanity. Zen La was spared, but while I served Galactus, I was an accomplice to terrible deeds. I was oblivious to my sins because my master had tampered with my soul. Yet in that I take no solace, nor do I accept it as an excuse. Thus I am compelled to use my power righteously in order to atone for my misdeeds. I have set before myself an endless task. I am forever alone and forever barred from again becoming what I was. I suppose we both pay the price for the failures of our past. True, we've each sacrificed bits of ourselves. I've tried to correct the mistakes, put everything back the way it should be, but I've always failed. I've always lacked the power to finish the job. But you can change that. Me? Think of what we could do together, our power pooled, to make things right again. So, let me get this straight. You're from another universe, like the guy with the axe. He came to this universe through a rift, and you followed him. Yeah, this guy looks like somebody I should trust. Just so. My chair gives me the ability to journey from my universe to yours. Okay, so now you're asking my help to protect both universes from some dire threat. That about the gist of things? Reality is a fragile thing. It must be safeguarded against those who would ascend to godhood. Believe me, I know. So what exactly is this threat? A man. At least, he was a man once. I believe you know him. His name is Hal Jordan. Huh? Kyle is shocked to hear Hal's name from this strange visitor. Imagine it, surfer. A chance to right the wrongs of the past. A tempting offer, to be sure. How I've longed to atone for my sins. How it's driven me, kept me from any semblance of life as a normal man. Now I'm given the opportunity to amend it all. I've learned from experience how dangerous a thing it is to toy with reality, for good or ill. To do so simply in hopes of easing my conscience is a selfish act indeed. But it wouldn't be for you. That's not why I've done the things I've done. Not for myself. I'm doing this for them, to bring back the millions of Coast City. How many billions could you save, Surfer, by rewriting your past? You're from another universe, and you know about Hal Jordan and everything he's done? Hal again. I wanted to believe he was okay. Not a danger anymore. Right. Hal almost restructured time itself. He's not going to just go away. Humility aside, I must admit to being rather resourceful. Matters of cosmic scope in any universe do not escape my notice. If your reality is at risk, perhaps mine is the next to be threatened. Sounds reasonable. Maybe this Thanos guy is what he says he is. I've constructed a weapon to stop Hal Jordan. Well then, if you got a weapon that powerful, you sure don't need my... Kyle turns to leave, but Thanos grabs his ring hand. It won't work without you, without this. The energies necessary to power my weapon can be gathered only with your ring. Look, I really don't know if I should believe you. Pardon me for saying so, but you don't exactly have a trusting face. Of course, you don't know me, but I did save you from Terax, and it's fairly apparent I have the best interests of two universes at heart. After all, what would I gain if all creation ceased to exist? So, Green Lantern, will you help me? Perhaps a greater good would indeed be served. Of course it would. Please, Surfer, will you help me? Okay, I'm in. Very well, Hal Jordan. You'll have my aid. I only hope I'm doing the right thing. You've made the proper decision, Surfer. Believe me. How do we accomplish what you intend? Simply give me your hand. 
The Silver Surfer takes Hal's hand, and part of the power cosmic is transferred to him. He uses the power to rewind time and restore the planet to existence. Uh, mm. The Surfer kneels on his board, and Hal helps him up. You're all right? I'm well enough. What happened? See for yourself, my friend. See what we have achieved. It worked. Moments ago, there was naught but rubble and corpses to mark the passing of this planet and its people. Now the world is whole again, as if the cyborg's carnage had never been. They fly down to the planet's surface. It worked! A miracle. Perhaps the sins of the past truly can be erased. You see? All is as it was. Together we can tailor history itself if we choose. They see that all the planet's cities and people have been brought back to life. I can be redeemed. My failures expunged. It's so simple. They should have listened to me when I offered them this chance before. It's within our scope to ease the suffering of two universes. And it all seems. Doesn't matter now, though. This is only the beginning. And this time, they can't stop me. Without consequence. Thanos takes Kyle to a large glowing rift in space by a gigantic machine. Oh. No. Oa. Oh, uh. This was the center of the universe, home to the Guardians. Well, what's left of it anyway. I had to destroy Oa in order to shut down Hal. Boom, just blew it up. But, my God, what did I create when I did it? You witness a breach in the fabric of reality, a rift caused by the planet's explosion. You would understand it as a doorway to other universes, including my own. I constructed my platform at this site in order to tap the almost limitless ambient energies of Oa that remain. With your ring to harness Oa's energy, this weapon shall bring about Hal Jordan's utter downfall. This thing can do that? You'd be surprised. Please take your place. Green Lantern sits in a chair and places his ring hand in the machine. Maybe... I'm not going to get fried like a moth in a bug zapper, right? That should be the least of your concerns. Maybe I should reconsider. Thanos throws a switch and part of GL's energy is transferred. <laughs> Hal reacts in pain. Ah! What is it, Hal? A disturbance. Someone is tampering with the structure of the universe, of both universes. My cosmic awareness is weakened, but yes, now I sense it as well. The surfer takes Hal onto his board. Power of this magnitude. The destruction could be unimaginable. We have to stop whatever's happening. I can guide us, if you can take us there. With all the speed I can muster, they speed away. <laughs> I pray I've not made a tragic error in surrendering most of my power cosmic to Hal. If we are to face some threat, will what remains to me be enough? Enough. Channeling so much raw energy through the ring. I feel like the guy in the bottom of the mosh pit. Hey, this'll just take away Hal's powers or something, right? I mean, we're not gonna kill him. Kill Hal? No, my goals are nothing so pedestrian. My Lady Death's favor cannot be gained with the sacrifice of a single life. I've enacted grand designs in pursuit of her love, and always she has spurned me. I am banished from her kingdom, but I will not be denied. You don't comprehend what you've done, do you? By focusing Oa's energies, you suffused me with the means to accomplish universal annihilation. Lady Death will not have me in her realm, so I shall obliterate all else. I will unleash a destruction so complete there will be naught but the realm of death. And then, finally, I will take my place at her side. You used me! From the beginning! This was never about Hal! Kyle tries to remove his hand, but it is stuck. You were a pawn to me. I plucked a being from your universe to test the rift, then sent that fool Terax to test you.
Thanos pulls him free. <laughs> You've served your purpose, boy. Give Lady Death my regards. Silver Surfer and Hal arrive through the portal. <laughs> here. The disturbance is here. The gateway between our universes where Oa once stood. I recognize Mad Thanos, a villain of truly cosmic ambition, but the other is unknown to me. My successor is Green Lantern. I thought he was a hero, but he's clearly in league with your Thanos. Only his ring could have gathered the energies that were here. Thanos has Oa's power. Leave him to me. Then Green Lantern is mine. Wait, I was just... <sighs> Sometimes. There's just no talking to people. The Surfer and the Lantern meet in combat. <laughs> Hal Jordan, Parallax, I know why you are here. Then you have me at a disadvantage. Why are you here? Why collect Oa's energy? In order to destroy everything that exists. And I finally have enough power to recreate it. Our goals, it would seem, are at odds. So it would seem. Thanos and Parallax crash together in a burst of energies. <laughs> Come on, give me two seconds to explain. Like I don't feel bad enough already, I hand that Thanos guy enough juice to eradicate all life. And this dude on the surfboard wants to take me apart because he thinks I did it on purpose. Kyle forms a wall, but the surfer crashes through it. <laughs> You've given a madman ultimate power. The time for discussion is long gone. He creates a horse and knight's armor. Green Lantern's ring allows him to create virtually anything. Weakened as I am, my chances of overcoming such a weapon are slim. Both of them fire energy beams at each other. <laughs> I can make it right. There's nothing I can't accomplish with the server's power. I can create the universe all over again in my image, beginning with Oa. Hal recreates the planet Oa. <laughs> How fitting. You restore the home of your former masters. At least it gives me a place to start. Thanos destroys it. I can unpeel the skin of reality, reduce all there is to nothingness, and be joined with my lady death. No! This is a day of creation, not destruction! Parallax blasts Thanos with full force. <laughs> All I need is the willpower. I only have to think it, and it becomes real. Coast City's resurrection has always driven me. Hal brings back Coast City. <laughs> now it lives again. Sorry, man, but you're not leaving me with another option. Green Lantern washes over the surfer with a wave of energy. <laughs> he picks the surfer up off his board and shows him the battle between Parallax and Thanos. You have to listen to me. You have to see what's happening. Their massive swarms battle over Coast City, floating on an asteroid. What? What have they become? Gods, maybe. I don't know. I've been through this before with Hal. He believes he's right, but he's blind to what he's doing. And Thanos is just nuts. He suckered me into giving him Oa's energy. Now they're going after each other. The two of us have to stop them. He puts the surfer back down. I misjudged you, Green Lantern. My apologies. But I can be of little aid. I've barely any power left. Your ring must strip them of the energies they wield. Kyle looks at his ring, uncertain. I... I've never used it that way before. You don't have a choice. Hal and Thanos wrestle on the streets of Coast City. Create anything you like, Jordan! Cities! Whole worlds! I'll destroy all of them! As their gigantic energy forms battle high above it, and Thanos brings a massive fist down on the buildings. My city! It's happening again! On the ground, Hal leaps at him. Madman! The only thing to be destroyed today is you! By all means, try to kill me. Send me to my lady's side. Green Lantern flies in and grabs Thanos with green energy as the Silver Surfer tackles Parallax, headed away from them. Mm. <sighs> Gotta separate them first. Before they unleash something we can't stop. Why, Surfer? I'm only doing what's right! You're not. Your obsession has unbalanced you. 
I should have seen it sooner. You need help. Thanos breaks free, charging at them both. No one will deny me, now that ultimate power is mine. No, it's mine, because the ring's mine. It's the most powerful weapon in the universe, Thanos. Not sure if I believed that before, but you proved it to me. And if it can destroy two universes... Kyle stops his attack with a burst of power. It can save them as well. You both took power. I'm taking it back. I've always thought of the ring as a tool, a French curve when I can't find one in my box of art supplies. But it's much more. It's endless possibility. The only limitation is me. And I'm going to be worthy of it, now more than ever. I can do this. He extends his energy to Parallax and Thanos and absorbs the cosmic power from them both. <laughs> <laughs> Green Lantern glows with overwhelming energy bursting from his body. <laughs> Problem is, what do I do with the energy now that I've got it? Ugh, I, I can't contain it all. So much power. I almost understand why Hal lusts after it. Almost. But I know it's more than I can handle. The surfer races towards him. My body is a cosmic battery. Give the power to me. It's too much. You won't survive. I have a better chance than you. There's no other way. You're right. I'm sorry. Kyle pours the energy into the Silver Surfer. <laughs> now he glows with the same intensity. <laughs> More energy than I'd imagined possible. Boiling within. Consuming me. But in this sea of pain, I finally understand redemption. My sins will be absolved not by rewriting the past, but by assuring the future. If I must sacrifice myself, I do it gladly. If my death is needed to preserve two universes, then my life was not lived in vain. Finally, the surfer gains control of the excess power. <laughs> the glowing stops. It is done. I've absorbed all the energy. Controlled it. Amazing. You okay? Let me help. Kyle forms Bikini Girls to help him stand. I feel recharged. Such irony. I thought I'd found a kindred soul in Hal Jordan. But I have far more in common with you, Kyle Rayner. You're a savior, a hero. Me? Well, um, thanks. I'm trying. What do we do with them? Suddenly the portal begins to close. The rift! What's happening? It's closing. Thanos is being pulled back to his universe, even as Hal is thrown deeper into this one. The universes are writing themselves, claiming what belongs to them. I have to return while I can. Perhaps we'll meet again. Wait, I don't even know your name. The surfer flies into the portal as Thanos is drawn in. <sighs> meet again? Oh, yeah. Like that's really gonna happen. So that's it. No sign of Hal, of course. Gone, just like Coast City and any other remnants of the battle with Thanos. Faded away like memories. Back home in New York now, it's as if nothing happened. But I know that's not exactly true. Something happened to me. I learned what my ring is truly capable of. What I'm capable of. And I think I'll be a better hero because of it. Still, just between us, I'm glad it's over. Far below on the streets of New York, a nondescript cardboard box in an alleyway begins to emit beams of golden light. The End as you'll see if you follow this story into DC vs. Marvel, that glowing box will be the cause of all sorts of trouble for both universes. In addition to this crossover, several others came out the same year, and I'll just show you a few of those before we end the episode, and all of these have a decent chance of becoming episodes in the future. A pair of Batman Punisher crossovers were published. One during the Night Quest storyline features Jean Paul Valley's Batman finding some common ground with the death-dealing Marvel hero and another one following Bruce's return finds his Batman much more at odds with Frank Castle's way of doing things. 
and both are pretty good. Darkseid vs. Galactus, the hunger, pits an unstoppable force against an immovable object as Galactus attempts to feed on the life energy inside Darkseid's planet of Apocalypse. The battle will be hard fought on both sides with no holds barred and nothing kept in reserve as Darkseid brings all his forces and powers to bear to resist the cosmic juggernaut of destruction, with excellent story and artwork by John Byrne in his classic style. And finally, two more Batman crossovers as he was as big a seller back then as he is now. Batman Captain America, also by Byrne, is already an episode, though set in its own unconnected universe outside of continuity under the Elseworlds imprint. Batman Spider-Man is an excellent tale featuring Kingpin, but not as a villain. Rather, his wife is dying and he needs the help of a certain wall crawler to save her life with a special medicine. But the team of Joker and Carnage will stand in his way, and Spider-Man will need the Batman's help to crack the case and save the day. J.M.D. Matisse is one of my favorite writers, and of all the crossovers in this outro, this is probably the best one. Well, I certainly hope you've enjoyed the tale of Green Lantern and Silver Surfer. This was done by the usual Green Lantern creative team of Ron Mars and Daryl Banks, so if you like the style of writing and the fine artwork in this book, you'd probably also like their run on Green Lantern, which lasted quite a while. And you can see more of their work in my episode Green Lantern and Emerald Knights. Well, that'll do it for this one, so please, take care out there. And as always, thanks for watching.